Namaskar. We have been researching the spiritual dimension for over 25 years. Now, unlike conventional research which uses our faculties of the five senses, mind and intellect, spiritual research can only be done using one's sixth sense. Through advanced sixth sense, gained through spiritual practice, seekers of God are able to experience and see into the spiritual dimension and tell us things that a normal person just cannot. Recently, SSRF has been using advanced biofeedback machines to study the effects of various stimuli on our auras and kundalini chakras. And kundalini chakras are basically energy centers in our body. Now, this has been of great benefit as it helps to physically demonstrate and explain the research we have already done through a spiritual means. One such machine was the DDFAO, which is basically a French acronym which stands for a computer-aided screening and functional diagnosis. The DDFAO measures the body's electrical activity, actually using the same principles which are behind the well-known EEG and ECG machines. But instead of focusing just on the brain or heart activities, the DDFAO applies a technique to the entire body to record an electrosomatogram or an ESG. The equipment that the DDFAO contains is basically a measuring device placed in a plastic box, six electrodes, two self-adhesive electrodes placed on the forehead, two plaques for the palms and two plaques for the soles of one's feet and a computer to run the software. The electrodes are taped to the person's hands, feet and forehead and then a very low electric current is passed through the body of the person measuring the body's electrical activity. Then, running various algorithms, the readings are finally displayed on a computer in a graphical format. One such graphical aspect that is displayed is the state of our chakras. I will touch upon what chakras are a little later in this video. Now we use the DDF here to do various experiments that help us to understand the spiritual impact of our various activities on a day-to-day -day basis and their impact on our chakras and our spiritual practice. Every day we look at people, we communicate with friends and associates, but little understanding of the spiritual impact is there with us. With the help of the DDFAO, we were able to show this impact depending on the spiritual state of the person that we were communicating with. We also ran various other comparative studies that included the impact of vegetarian and non-vegetarian food, types of clothes, the music that we listen to, the alcohol that we drink and the fruit juice that we drink. The Kundalini Chakras are subtle intangible centers that maintain the fine balance of the subtle energy required for the functioning of the various bodies of human existence. The functioning of these chakras affects the functioning of the body organs related to that chakra. Now there are seven main chakras and they are aligned with the spinal column. The seven main chakras, that is the energy centers that have different and related qualities associated with them are as follows. The upper four chakras starting from the heart region, uh, the first is the Anahat chakra or the heart chakra and that's associated with the quality of yearning. The Vishuddha chakra or the throat chakra and it is associated with the quality of worldly and spiritual emotions. The Adnya chakra or the brow chakra and this is associated with the quality of concentration. The Sahasrar chakra or the head chakra and this is associated with getting the experience of the God Principle. Now the three lower chakras starting from the navel area to the end of the spinal column. The Manitpur chakra at the navel region and this is associated with the qualities of likes and dislikes. The Swadishtan chakra or the sacral chakra and this is associated with carnal desire. And lastly the Muladhar chakra or the base or root chakra and this is associated with functions with regards to excretion. 
Now the upper four chakras are associated with spiritual growth and the lower three chakras are associated with worldly likes and dislikes. Making use of this DDFAO technique, we try to study the effect of different aspects in spiritual practice like chanting the name of God, being in satsang or the company of truth, being in the company of saints and listening to their discourses, serving God or satseva, saying a prayer and we try this across various groups of seekers. In this video, using the electrosomatographic scanning technique, using the DDFAO, we will be demonstrating the effect of prayers on the various chakras. These readings obtained from the DDFAO were available in the form of bar charts and numerical values. Using this technique, we mapped the biofield energy associated with the seven Kundalini chakras, that is the energy centers in the body of a seeker. And we noted the reading of the seven chakras of the seeker before and after prayer. Mrs. Shravani Parab, a seeker in the SSRF ashram in Goa, who was part of the experiment, narrated her condition before praying. I was experiencing severe distress over the last 10 to 12 days, my pran shakti had reduced considerably. I was having physical problems like body ache and headache. Apart from this, there was psychological distress too, for example, irritation and suicidal thoughts. Due to this, I was in a bad shape. I was also not able to do seva. During this period, scanning was done on me. After the scanning, I prayed ardently to His Holiness Dr. Arthavle. O oh Lord, I am not able to pray, chant or serve God in any way. Please, you only get all this done through me. Then, I laid down for a while. I experienced that someone is getting the chanting and praying done through me. He was His Holiness Dr. Arthavle himself. This went on for three hours. After this prayer, my condition improved. All my body pain disappeared. My vital energy also increased to 80 to 90 percent. My irritability also disappeared. After that, scanning was repeated. Now, for comparison, we have provided the quantitative analysis and the bar diagram of the bioenergy fields of the body associated with the seven chakras obtained through scanning. This is before and after praying. The scanning before praying was done at 12.33 p.m. and after praying at 5.31 p.m. The bar charts of these readings were as follows. The figures on the y-axis denote the numerical values. The figures below the zero value on the y-axis are negative and those above are positive. Now the bars from the left to right are basically the chakras numbered from 1 to 7 and they reflect serially the state of the biofield energy of the seven chakras starting from the Muladhar on the left to the Sahasrar chakra on the right. The information available in the bar charts is also available in numerical form. Now the importance of acquiring information about the Kundalini chakras is that these seven chakras are energy centers and they play an important role in the fine-tuning of the subtle energy flow in the subtle body. The imbibing of the subtle black energy as well as positive energy or Chaitanya from the outside and its transmission through the body is done through these chakras. Now let's see a bar diagram of the condition of the chakras of Mrs. Shravani before and after praying. The upper part of the screen depicts a bar chart of the condition before she was praying and the lower part depicts a bar chart of the condition after she was praying. Now I will try to explain the conditions of the seven chakras through the readings acquired from this machine. As you can see, the Muladhar Chakra was initially minus one before prayer and after prayer 
it was minus 29. And as you can see from this table, uh, the Swadhisthan chakra was initially minus 2 before prayer and after prayer it was minus 23. The Manipur chakra was initially plus 2 and thereafter minus 21. The Anahat chakra or the heart chakra was initially plus 1 and thereafter went up to plus 14. The Vishuddha or the throat chakra uh, before prayer was minus 29 and after prayer was minus 3. The Adnya chakra before prayer was minus 44 and after prayer the chakra went up to minus 11. The Sahasra chakra before prayers was minus 19 and after was plus 6. Like this, the table on the screen now shows the difference of all the seven chakras before and after prayer. As you can see, there is a clear difference in the reading before and after the prayerful state that Mrs. Parab experienced. Here we have only presented one example of the effect of intense praying of a person. So let's see the key findings in this experiment. It becomes clear that the four chakras in the upper portion of the body, namely the Sahasrar, Adnya, Vishuddha and Anahat, become more active after praying. The activation of these chakras enhance the potential for spiritual practice as they are associated with learning and concentration. And the chakras in the lower portion of the body, namely the Manipur, Swadishtan and Muladhar became more inert after praying. Here becoming more inert with the bottom chakras is actually a positive sign. These centers are associated with the likes and dislikes and the desires in a worldly sense. Now as a person does spiritual practice, the likes and dislikes reduce and so does one's desires which actually eats up a lot of our mental energy. One is able to be more focused on their spiritual practice and only the necessary amount of energy required for running the related organs is utilized. Now as you can see, there is a clear difference in the readings before and after the prayerful state of Mrs. Parab. The upper chakras have become more active while the lower chakras have become more inert or inactive. Now let's look at the science behind the difference in the readings. The upper four chakras are associated with the spiritual practice and the sattva component. On the other hand, the lower three chakras are associated with the great illusion or maya and are rajatama predominant. To understand more on sattva rajatama, please do visit our website spiritualresearchfoundation.org. Now this is the interesting part. The chakras have a 90% effect on the mind and only a 10% effect on the body. Hence, even if the lower chakras become inert or inactive, its effect is mainly on the mind. The rajatama thoughts or desires and likes and dislikes, they all reduce and finally stop at higher spiritual levels. That is why the upper chakras can do more tasks or more spiritual practice in a better way. As the upper chakras become active through spiritual practice, it helps to improve the sattva component further. Here, we have presented only one example of the effect of intense praying on a person. So let's see the key findings of the experiment. Now it becomes clear that the four chakras in the upper body, namely the Sahasrar, the Adnya, the Vishuddha and the Anahat, become more active after praying. The activation of these chakras enhance the potential for spiritual practice as they are associated with learning and concentration. And the chakras on the lower portion of the body, namely the Manipur, Swadishtan and the Muladhar, become more inert after praying. One is able to be more focused on spiritual practice and only the necessary amount of energy 
required for running the related uh, organs is utilized. I hope you've learned much from this video, which just begins to explore the possibilities of various experiments that can be done to improve our state of well-being and improve upon our spiritual practice to realize the true aim of life, which is the realization of God.